Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. So many of you wanted this video, which is about implementing a document scanner on Android. In the last episode of Philips Android News, I mentioned that there is a new library that comes straight from Google, uh, which is within the ML kit, so machine learning kit, that now allows us to implement document scanning in a very easy way. You can use this library for completely free. You don't need an API key. You just need to include the dependency and you're ready to use it. And just to show you what we will build, we will build this little app here, which has a scan PDF button. And if we click that, then you can see the camera window will open up. We can hold this over some kind of document like this book. Hold still. And then you can see we successfully scanned our document. The app or the library rather will already detect the corners. It will remove your fingers. It might apply some filters, but also lets you manipulate this directly. So on the one hand, you can see we could also add more pages here by clicking this little uh, plus button. We could crop it and rotate it. So here, if we're not fine with how the corners are, we could also um, select the corners on our own, click apply, and then we could also apply some filters, for example, grayscale, to have the typical document scanning result. If you want to run some AI over it or so, then it's usually a good idea to have as much contrast as possible. And if we then click apply and we say we're fine with this, then we get this in our app here as an image, but also as a PDF, which will be saved in our file system. That is at least what I will show you here. So to get started, we want to go inside of our build.gradle app level file. And I would like to ask you to please add these two dependencies. On the one hand, we have our Google Play services, MLKit document scanner and so on. You, know, you can guess what this is for. This is for the document scanner. And we have Coil Compose, which is for image loading, since the results of the scanned files, uh, we on the one hand get as an image, and as a PDF, both those come as URIs, which we then still need to read in. And for the image URIs, we can easily show these in an image view that comes from Cole, which is why I included that library. Now jumping back to main activity, let's first of all go directly inside of on create here. And the first thing is we want to specify some options. And those are GMS document scanner options with which we can just configure what kind of document scan scanning config we really need. And we can say dot set scanner mode, for example, which lets us configure whether we want the full capabilities of the document scanner with all the functionalities as I've just showed you, or just the most important uh, pieces of functionality, like applying filters, cropping the image, and so on. We would like to have the full features here. So we say scanner underscore mode underscore full. We can hit Alt Enter to import that constant and proceed. We could also say set gallery import allowed. So if we set that to true, then that would mean that uh, the user would also see a button from where they can import uh, photos that they already made with their device's camera without needing to retake it in the app. Let's see what else we can do. We can also set the uh, page limit. So if we have a PDF and we want to limit the user on only being able to scan, let's say, five pages, we could set the page limit to five. And last but not least, we have the result formats. So what kind of formats we want the result to be in. And for the sake of this app, we will set this to result format JPEG and result format PDF. Since we care about both PDFs and JPEGs, we can then call that build to construct these options and also construct our scanner instance in which we will pass these options. So val scanner is equal to GMS document scanner dot actually not dot um no document document scanning it actually is uh, a little bit confusing uh, that get client so we need this gms document scanner instance which we can get by just passing in our options and the way the scanner now works is that all we need to do is to launch it as an activity for a result because all we really just saw is that we opened another activity which contained the camera frame which contained all the configuration and um, options for us to uh, configure that camera. That is the activity that the library from the ML kit for document scanning already created for us that contains all the logic that already comes from the library. And all we need to do is we need to launch this activity for a result because that's all we need. We launch it and we expect a result. The result in this case is the scanned PDF and scanned images. And launching such an activity for a result, we can easily do with a so-called activity result launcher. Surprise, surprise. So we can have something like a scanner launcher and set that equal to remember launcher for activity result. Here we need to define such a contract, which we can get from activity result contracts that start activity for result. So depending on what kind of action we want to perform here, 
with this activity. When we fire this launcher, um, we could create a document, get some content like a picture, request permissions. But what we want to do here is we just want to launch a generic, whoops, generic activity for a result. And then we get an on result callback, which gives us this activity result that contains whether document scanning was successful or not. And if it was, it also contains the information about the scan pages. So now let's proceed with the UI first so we could actually display these scan pages. And for that, we need an image URIs state here. By remember, mutable state of, and that is just a list of image URIs. And here we could actually also just use a mutable state list of, that's up to you. We can just say, is equal to remember. Here we say that's a val. And then we just need to define that this is a list of URIs from Android Net. Then we want to construct our little UI. So in this case, we'll take a look here. We really only have a column here, a column for every single um, image and a little button. Of course, if you could potentially scan a lot of pages, then a lazy column would probably make a lot more sense here. But just for the sake of simplicity, let's choose a column. So we actually see something. We say modifier is modifier fill max size. We center the content vertically, arrangement center, as well as horizontally. Center, horizontally. Just like this. And the first thing I want to show in this column is our list of image juries, at least um, as an actual image. For that, we can take our image juries state list, loop over that with for each, get a reference to each URI and then show an async image which comes from Coil since that async image composable can directly show a URI just by passing it to this model. Let's ignore the content description and just make sure we pass something for the content scale. So how we want to scale our image if it doesn't fit in the bounds of our async image composable. I'd like to choose fill, uh, fill width here. So it just fills the whole width and then adjust the height based on the image's dimensions. We can then also apply a modifier of fill max width to tell it exactly that. And then below this for each block, we just want to have a little button which triggers the document scanner. So the text here should be scan PDF. And when this button is clicked, all we want to do is we want to use our scanner reference and launch our activity for result. So scanner we first of all want to get this intent sender, which uh, is the input our activity result launcher expects. So we get the start scan intent, passing in our main activity. So this add main activity. And that is actually a task, what this get start scan intent uh, returns. So for example, if there was no camera or no camera available at least, uh, then this would probably return false since um, there is no uh, start scan intent here that could be returned. That's why it returns a task which can either succeed or fail. If it succeeds, we can listen to this with this add on success listener, which gives us this intent sender result and an on failure listener, which will be triggered for any type of exception. Um, could also be if your device doesn't have enough RAM, for example, since this feature requires a little bit amount of RAM, then this failure listener will trigger. In this case, we can just display a toast, toast make text, pass in, for example, our application context. And let's say we pass our exceptions message. Duration can be toast, oops, that length long, that show, there we go. And if everything was successful, we get a reference to our intent sender, which we can now finally use to really fire off our activity result launcher. So here we want to say scanner launcher, that launch, which expects an intent, it should actually expect an intent sender. And that is because this needs to be start intent sender for result, not activity for result. So let's swap this out. And then our scanner launcher whoops, actually expects an intent sender request, which we can create with intent sender request that builder. This takes in the actual intent sender. So it here, and then we call that build to get the actual intent sender we needed to pass in this launch block. If you'd need some further parameters uh, and config for this intent you're firing here, you could also set some flags, set the fill in intent and so on, but we don't really need this here. Cool, so this will launch our document scanning activity. But what we haven't implemented yet is what we will do with the result after the user actually chose and, and scanned their uh, document. And that will happen 
here in this on result callback. So as soon as we click done and say we finished scanning, then this on result callback will be fired, giving us the activity result, which we can now check with it dot result code. If that's result okay, then we know that everything was okay. And normally this activity result would contain this result data here in form of an intent. That intent would again contain data in form of a URI, in form of extras and so on. So parsing this would be quite complex, but luckily the library already comes with a function to do exactly that for us. So we can get the result by saying gms document scanning result dot from activity result intent. Here we just pass in the intent, which is it dot data. And this is now such a gms document scanning result, which contains all the further information we need. So on the one hand, the PDF, which was scanned and the different pages in form of images. So first of all, we can say our image URI state is equal to result dot uh, question mark dot pages dot map. And we map this to the image URIs of each page. And we'd also need to actually convert these to mutable state lists. Um, you know what? Let's actually make this a, a real list inside of a normal compose state. I think the state list just overcomplicates this here. Change this back to a var, say by remember. And here we say we have a mutable state of instead of state list of. Then this would be a mutable state of list of URI. And the initial value is just an empty list. Hit alt enter to import that. Alt enter again. And then we should be able to just assign this here. If it's now we assign an empty list. So much about the image URIs. That should already work to display all of our images in our UI. What I would also want to show you is how you can now get the PDF and do something with it. In this example, I just want to take the PDF that was scanned and save it in our app's internal storage so we can just inspect it here in Android Studio and see that it was really saved and properly scanned. And if we take a look at our result, that PDF, and that is a GMS documents getting result, that PDF. If we also have a null check there and say, let get a reference to our PDF, then we can see, okay, that PDF actually has a URI and it has a page count. We only care about the URI here because we want to just take all the bytes uh, that are contained in that URI and save them in our internal storage. Basically, just copy them over. And that works by creating a so-called file output stream for which we need to provide a file. So let's create that file. The parent directory is just our files there, which refers to the internal storage of our app. So just the, the internal sandbox for which we don't need any permissions, uh, which only our own app can read. And the child is the file name, which we can say scan.pdf, for example. And then whenever we have a URI and want to read the data that is saved at that URI, we need the content resolver. Content resolver want to open an input stream with a given URI, which is pdf.uri. And now we can say that use. So use will just really open that stream and close it as soon as the use block is over. It will give us an, a reference to this input stream, which we can now call and say copy to, so all the data in that input stream we want to take and copy over to a specific output stream. And guess what? Our output stream is our file output stream. So we just take all the data from that input stream, copy it to this file that we specified here. And that's it. That's all we need. Super simple scanning. Let's launch this, see if everything works and I didn't forget anything. And there we go. Here's our app. Click scan PDF. Our scanner is launching. Let's hold this over my book here again. Hold steady. There we go. There is our little scan result. Let's also click this plus button to scan another page. I'll just open a random page here of this book. And there we go. Scanned it. You can see this is a little bit off. I'd like to adjust the corners here. Whoops, already throwing down my mouse here. Um, let's click crop and rotate take our corners and maybe adjust this a little bit here. So it looks like a real scanned page. Click apply. There we go. Looks much better. And if we now click done, then we have these pages here in our app directly. Uh, we can actually not scroll because I forgot the vertical scroll modifier here at our column. Um, but if we do that with remember scroll state, then uh, we should be able to do that when we refresh our app. So far, so good. Let's also take a look at if this PDF was properly saved in our internal storage. We can do this by going to this little more tool windows button here 
and opening this device explorer which lets us dive into the file hierarchy of our device. Make sure to select the device you actually ran this app on, in my case, my Pixel 6. When I open, oh, where is it? Data, which is the internal storage of our apps. So data, data, and then we can search for our document scanner ML kit. That is the app, the package name of that, uh, that uh, I used here. You can see here, you can find your apps cache, but also your apps files. If we open this, then we find a scan PDF. Let's double click on that to open this in Android Studio, or actually not Android Studio, but my PDF viewer. And there you go. That is our scanned document with two pages. So it's working perfectly fine. Awesome. If you enjoyed this video, then you will definitely also enjoy my much more advanced Android premium courses, which you can all find down below by clicking the first link in this video's description. Check them out. You won't regret it. And other than that, Thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video and have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.